Today we are at Wat Swan Dok and we hear that there is an amazing restaurant here on the temple grounds. It's called Im Aim and it used to be called Poon Poon, so that's what we're searching for right now. It's a vegetarian restaurant and it's come highly recommended from a friend. But before we go have lunch, we're going to go for a wander around in the temple. So, so far I'm enjoying kind of the minimal design here and they have a really cool outdoor open kitchen. So you can see them preparing your food. The do-it-yourself water reminds me a lot of being back in Korea when we used to eat at the gimbap restaurants. I'm gonna go up and grab our own waters. So our first dish has arrived, the vegetarian spring rolls. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Mmm. Mmm. Hang on, I'm bringing my mouth, but this is really good. Mm. Definitely some of the best spring rolls I've had here in Chiang Mai. Have a look inside. It has bean sprouts, glass noodles, some vegetables. It's really flavorful. I think they've added some nice spices in there. Oh, there comes the rest of our food. Ooh. Thank you. Looks amazing. Yep. Back to your spring roll. Got distracted there. Have a bite. Yeah, these are excellent. And my favorite part about this is the tamarind dipping sauce. That's huh? really unique and tangy. So the masterpiece of a salad has arrived. La la. What kind of sauce is that? I think it may be pumpkin based on the color, but we'll see. So this is a really healthy salad. If you look over here, you can see we have some green beans, red beans, corn, there's even some barley, and of course we love cheese, so we had to get a bit of feta cheese on top. Yeah, an extra 20 baht. Ooh, yeah. I'd say well worth it. Ooh, yes. And, how is it? Mm. That's wonderful. So good you've had three bites and I haven't had any. Mm -hmm. So we have a little taste of India happening over here. Indeed we do. And this here is a little bit of a roti flatbread, and this is the Indian curry, so... Mm, mm, mm. I don't really know what's in it, so it's going to be an interesting first bite. Oh, it's nice and thick, I can tell that. Looks like it has a lot of vegetables. Mm. That's wonderful. It's got a coconut base, it's spicy, and yeah, I can take, taste a lot of different vegetables in there. And that would be our dessert. Okay, so this was listed as sweet potato honey. <laughs> sweet potato tea With honey. on the menu. So I was expecting a teacup, but apparently it's a dessert. The tea. In a spoon. It tastes like ginger. That's ginger tea. That's not, that's not sweet potato. This is my dessert, which I'm kindly sharing with Sam. Oh yeah? Because I'm such a generous I person. I don't recall that part of the deal. Anyways, we're having <clears throat> bananas with coconut milk. If you look down here, you can see Whoop. giant slabs of bananas. So I'm gonna take one of those, make sure I got lots of coconut milk too.
That's the face of satisfaction. Yeah. <laughs> that awesome feast came to 300 baht, which is $10, and that included two shakes, three main dishes, and two desserts. So that's a lot of food for $10 for two people. So today we are having lunch at a little place called the Peppermint Cafe. This is in some little back alley in Chiang Mai and we're sitting outside just right by the street and we're going to enjoy some more northern Thai food. And you know how much we like our back alley restaurants. Original Thai food and good shakes. Looks like you got just that. Mm -hmm. So today we are having a dish that is called cow soy. And if you just look down over here, you can see that it kind of looks like a curry type soup. And we have regular boiled noodles, some crispy noodles, and chicken over top. So this is a Burmese influenced dish from Northern Thailand and it literally means cut rice. This is one of Northern Thailand's most famous dishes. I've had this dish once before and I think my favorite part is the combination of the soft egg noodles mixed in with the crispy ones. It's just a nice crunchy soft texture and the curry sauce gives it a bit of an extra kick. So here we go. I love coconut based curries and this is quite similar to Masaman curry. popular street food in northern Thailand but it's actually quite hard to find overseas in Thai restaurants so that means you have to come to northern Thailand and try it for yourself. Empty plate over here, a sign of a good meal. Overall that meal was delicious and coming in at just 59 baht per dish, what value? Mm, 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 mm. In Chiang Mai, and today we are heading to the Saturday night market. Well, we're still a few blocks away, but I know we're close. You know why? Because I can smell the food. You got there. So I got myself a twist potato, which is a lot like the tornado chips we used to have in Korea. Looks like it's all season. Mm. And? Nice, barbecue flavor. And you're gonna be sharing that. <gasps> you're wasting the chips. It's like blueberry cheesy. Oh, 
<laughs> Snow ice cream with blueberry sauce drizzled over top. Mm. How articulate. Mm. Mm. So what did you get? I've got some pan-fried dumplings, very similar to the Korean goon mandu that we often had when we were living as teachers in Korea. So let's see if these are as good. They look hot. <laughs> Someone found his favorites here. So what started as just a little snack out here at the market has turned on to a full-on feast. I've got dim sum and fried spring rolls. Looking good, and I got this German sausage. Thingy. Very good. And in case we didn't quite have enough to eat, a sweet little dessert treat. So it's banana egg roti with lots of chocolate and condensed milk drizzled over top. Today we are back at our favorite Thai restaurant, but we are going to be having a special meal. We have ordered a set for two people that focuses on northern Thai dishes. So we are going to get a sampling of different curries that come along with sticky rice. And this is what it might look like. Our first dish has arrived and it's called Khao Soi. And it is fried noodles on top of a hearty curry. Ooh, that looks amazing. It does. Mmm, let's dig into that, baby. I'm gonna try my first fried noodle. Fried noodle, I've never had anything like this. Hmm. It's kind of nice. Ooh, and the curry is kind of spicy. <laughs> A very flavorful, spicy curry. I can tell it's made out of some coconut milk. It's not a very thick curry, it's more stew like and soupy, but it's really nice on a warm day like this. I'm enjoying it. So a lot of the northern Thai dishes have pork in them. So as you can see over here, we've got a pork sausage. We have something that looks like ground pork with some nice green herbs. And this might also be pork if you ask me. One of the characteristic elements of northern Thai food is that you eat your side dishes with sticky rice. Ooh, this is going to be tasty. Not sure if I'm supposed to be using my hands or not, but since it's sticky rice, I am. <laughs> We're gonna dip it over here. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. 
spicy, sweet. This one is surprisingly sweet. So I'm gonna try one of these little puffs and another kind of dipping sauce here. Mm, that looks like it could be spicy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Burning your mouth. So we also have a nice pumpkin stew over here. Tofu. What tofu? <laughs> Spicy? Not spicy, just really hot. <laughs> hey, what's next? So next up in the dishes to try here would be the ground pork. Awesome. Mm. Looks like it's been tasty. marinated in a nice little sauce. Mm. Very strong flavor with the sauce. It's like looks like soy sauce, but oh, that's hard going down. Very tasty though. <laughs> so it's only our first week in Chiang Mai in Northern Thailand, but we are quickly discovering that this part of the country has a lot to offer in the cooking department. Normally when you think Thai food, you think, oh, pad Thai, green curries, but really there is so much variety here. And like today we had dishes that we've never even heard of before and they were so tasty. So And we still don't even know exactly what they are. Yes, we don't know the names. I'm sure we will learn them over the course of our time here. But for now, what we can tell you is Northern Thai food is really tasty. So just when we thought the meal was finally over, we are so stuffed. They bring dessert out for us and it is amazing. So here you can see bananas. It's just slices of bananas in a sweet, thick coconut cream. And it's amazing, really. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, mm -mm -mm. need to try it. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> I wanna see your face when you bite into that. <laughs> Wow. It almost has a bit of a rum caramel type flavor, which really accentuates the coconut milk. That was seriously the feast of feasts. We paid 300 baht in total for that, which is roughly 10 US dollars, and it was worth every penny, or should I say every baht. Just came back to Chiang Mai after a visa run in Penang, Malaysia, and also a short little holiday in Phuket. And are we ever glad to be back? One of the main things that we missed about Chiang Mai was the street food that we can get really close to our apartment. So today, we're having one of our favorite meals. So let me give you a very special tour of my bowl. Ooh, la, la. So we have the yellow egg noodles, very nice. Also comes with some dumplings, today it's pork. We also have slices of pork over here. Some bean sprouts and lots of greens which add a lot of flavor to the soup. One of the things I love about this particular stand here, this night stall, is that we can add our own different spices, exactly what we want into and the soup. And lots of chili, that's what I'll be putting in mine. So I'm hardly putting any because this is super potent and I always end up making it way too spicy and then I can't finish my dish. Let's hope that's not too much this time. Mm. Noodles. spicy again. <laughs> <laughs> about this dish is the wonton like dumplings they're absolutely delicious and we are having pork dumplings today tasty 
Yeah. So you've seen us film a few other food videos here at Chiang Mai Gate. But the reason we keep coming back to this place is because there is so much variety. There are so many different local foods that we can try. So we're constantly being introduced to new Thai meals. This is our favorite dining spot. Outdoors by the gate. And nice and cheap. Samuel Jeffrey, keeping it classy. You dripped. So the total for each meal is 35 baht, which is just over a dollar. Chang Chalan, and we're gonna be having a delectable dessert, one of my absolute favorites. And to be honest, much like the Pad Thai, this is also the best dish I've ever had here served at this particular restaurant. We got ourselves a friendly little visitor here. Hello, kitty cat. Basically what it is, is it's sticky rice and then on top of it you have this kind of sweet condensed coconut milk which is obviously has a lot of sugar added and then you have this, this wonderfully sliced mango. So I would like to preface this by saying that I hate rice. I don't ever eat rice back at home. But this dessert has really changed my mind. I'd say it's better than chocolates and better than cheesecake. And those are <laughs> my two favorite what? sweets. So that's saying a lot. Mango sticky rice. You have to try it. Mm. To me, what makes this the best mango sticky rice I've ever had is that the Cream sauce is just so thick here. It's already coconut milk sauce is usually quite thick, but this is the creamiest I've ever had. Oh, it's so, so good. So the price of our delicious mango sticky rice dessert is only 50 baht, which is about a dollar, a dollar and 70 cents. by Chiang Mai Gate. We actually came here looking for dumpling noodle soup, but our favorite vendor is not here, so instead we are having dessert. Nothing quite like banana egg roti with chocolate sauce, and we're gonna show you how it's ordered and made. One. Oh, uh, one please. Yes. Do you eat now? Oh yes, thank you. Thank you. Arabic guy, Arabic Palua. I don't know Palua. You don't know. 
So this kind of banana pancake is popular all over Southeast Asia, but this form it being roti is quite different than the one we tried, especially in Malaysia. It's more thick, it's fluffier, it's got a lot of banana stuff in it, and it's just loaded with chocolate sauce and condensed milk. So good, so good. She's speechless. You can really taste the banana, and the roti is very moist and wet with the chocolate sauce and the condensed milk. It's just really tasty, and probably not the best thing to be eating since we're on a health kick, but. I need a little cheat every once in a while. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's real good. The chocolate sauce is awesome. Even better though, it's Nutella. If you can find a place making it with Nutella, that's pure bliss. So this delicious little dessert slash snack is only 30 baht, which is $1. just moved here a few days ago and we already have a favorite restaurant it's called Chang Chalad so today we are going to be ordering some classic Thai meals I've been to Thailand probably close to 10 times and this place literally has the best pad Thai I've ever had anywhere dish so much. That's why I can't stop smiling. So pad thai is the kind of dish you know even if you've never been to Thailand you can get this back in Canada or really anywhere in the world. And the ingredients, well, it's a noodle dish as you can see and it also has tofu because we got the vegetarian version. It has egg, peanuts, bean sprouts, peanut sauce. It's just so tasty, so filling, so good. So what makes this the best pad thai I've ever had? Well, it's especially the sauce. This is the most tangy, sweet, rich, it's almost even a bit creamy sauce I've ever had on a pad thai. This must be a secret recipe because it's, I've never had anything quite like this before. It's just really, really unique. Chang Chalad is sort of this just tiny little unassuming restaurant that I first visited back in 2008. It has incredible food. So that's always been one of my biggest travel tips is, you know, try out these small little places. Try out these places that aren't on TripAdvisor or Lonely Planet. They're often the best places you can eat. So the price of the Pad Thai was only 60 baht, which is two US dollars. What a deal. Thailand! <laughs> We're back in Chiang Mai and the first thing I'm showing you is my grimy filthy hands. My bike just broke down in the middle of the road. We're 
we're planning on doing a food video at one of our favorite vegetarian restaurants. But the first thing I'm showing you is my messed up bike. Nice. For lunch today, we biked all the way out to a restaurant called Salad Concept. On the way here, Sam's bicycle kind of died, so we had to leave it behind. But we finally arrived, and we're going to show you what this place is like. So the cool thing about this place is that you can build your own salad or build your own wrap, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So all kinds of different ingredients you can let's choose. Let's get a wrap with pumpkin. What else? What was good last time? Feta cheese. It was a feta. This is a premium topping. All right, I've got my order picked out for my wrap. Let's see what's on it. So croutons, pasta, carrots, tomato, bell peppers, pumpkin, raisins, grilled bacon, avocado, and feta with Caesar dressing. How does that sound to you? Excellent. So you get a whole bunch of free toppings, I think five, and then you can add extra toppings to that for a few more bought. After that bike incident, I'm splurging right now. Well, it's very, very good. This is a berry shake. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have shake envy. It looks better than the juice I got. So this drink over here is guava, apple, and passion fruit. And it's so refreshing and tangy. Mm. Oh, a little sour. And crunchy because of the seeds, but it's so good. <laughs> so I've been noticing a bit of an interesting phenomenon in the last few months of travel. I often order things and Audrey goes, no, I don't think I want that, I don't think it'll be good. And then as soon as it's brought to the table, Audrey has food envy and tries to eat half of it. I do. So this time around I've ordered exactly the same thing you are getting, so I'll have my own. How does that look good? Or does that look good? I think mine looks better. Check this out. It has avocado, pumpkin, pasta, bacon, olives, feta cheese. Let me take a big bite. It's gonna be good. Mm. Amazing. So happy. <laughs> Almost makes up for the bicycle incident. Mm -hmm. Dig in. Wow, these are some of the best wraps I've ever had anywhere. Hmm. So for me, there are two star ingredients in this wrap. First of all, the pumpkin, it just makes it nice and sweet. And also this wrap has raisins, which is something I've never had in a wrap or a sandwich before, but it seems to be quite popular in Thailand. So let's take another bite because I mean, the first one was so good. Ooh, it's falling apart. Oh my. Mm. Mm. Give me a little bit of that. No. So, the two ingredients that really make this wrap amazing for me are the Caesar salad and the feta cheese. The Caesar salad actually has a little bit of Dijon mustard added into it and it gives it a real kick. And the feta, well, what doesn't taste good with feta? Well, you know us, we're not really big on dessert, so, well, I guess we're just gonna have to have them. Here is the peanut butter brownie cheesecake brownie. Mm. And if that wasn't, if that didn't look decadent enough, I'll take a look at this one. This is yeah. apple strudel cheesecake. That looks and amazing. Audrey, Audrey doesn't like cheesecake, so I'll, I'll be having all of it. Oh, please. You wish. <laughs> so this is a pretty nice brownie. It's very dark, heavy, chocolatey, and on top it has a little bit of cheesecake and then some chocolate mousse. Ooh. Mm. 
so much chocolate. Each bite is chocolatier than the next. Is it like a chocolate explosion in your mouth? Mm. All right, cheesecake strudel. <laughs> I mean, apple strudel on its own is really good. Cheesecake on its own is really good. Putting them together, that's like a superpower dessert. So overall that meal is a bit of a splurge for us. It came to just over 600 baht, which is roughly 20 US dollars. Oh my. In Southeast Asia, that is a real splurge, $10 per person. Normally we would spend half, a third, or if we were having a local Thai meal, even a quarter. But it was worth every baht because it was tasty. This video is for all of our Korean fans. since we made a video. Well, after a year of living in Korea, you know that you can't keep us too far away from Korean food. So, yes, we are in Thailand. We are in Thailand, but we are eating Korean food for dinner tonight. having is goon mandu which is fried dumplings this was one of my favorites back in korea and this is really tasty and we normally excellent job we normally had that at the jungkook jeeps the chinese restaurants in korea mm. good stuff oh yeah it has been literally months since i've had kimchi i've been missing this so much this particular one is really sour which I like. And here we have our Peiran Jim, which is sort of like an egg souffle. And this is something we often had when we were in Korea, especially when we were eating at barbecue places. So the Peiran Jim is different from what we've had in Korea. This one's a bit more watered down, and I have to say I do prefer the more authentic taste. trying the kimchi jeon, which is kind of like a Korean pancake and it has lots of kimchi, so this should be really flavorful. Mm. Good stuff. Mm. It's nice and fluffy. You can really taste the kimchi. And there's also a bit of spice in here. Yeah! One of the big differences of eating Korean food here in Thailand is that the side dishes are not included. So normally in Korea, side dishes are free, and if you finish them, they just keep refilling them for you. But over here, we ordered six side dishes, and that was 40 baht, which is about a dollar and 33 cents. So still a bargain, but it's not like Korea where you get it for free. And if the first serving wasn't enough, We've just ordered a second helping of the pan-fried dumplings and the kimchi pancakes. So the big question, what is Korean food like in Thailand? We had two dishes that we really loved. It was the goon mandu and the kimchi jeon. We actually ended up ordering seconds because both dishes were so tasty. However, with the Kiran Jim, it wasn't as great as it is in Korea. I think part of the problem is that they, they don't use the stone pot, which I think helps it boil better and maybe it just evaporates a bit of the water. So for the kimchi jeon, we ended up spending 100 baht, which is just over three dollars. Same for the goon mandu. And the Kiran Jim came in at 60 baht, which is two dollars. So, you know, overall, an affordable meal, roughly with side dishes and water, you know, you're looking at about $10, maybe 300 baht. So if you're craving some Korean food and you find yourself in Chiang Mai, Thailand, we highly recommend this little place and it's called Korea House. 